the hot spots will be set up in the state to provide free internet in public places. Implementation of K-Phone project with a vision to ensure last mile connectivity to government, offices and educational institutions in the state and to provide free high speed internet connectivity to poor families is progressing well. My government is committed to the implementation of this project which has become the target of vicious propaganda by wasted interest. <coughs> International Center for Free and Open Source Software is working in collaboration with free software organizations in India and abroad for the promotion, propag propagation, and application of free software. ICFOSS will be tasked with, the with formulating an action plan on open source technology in collaboration with national and international research institutes to achieve sustainable development goals. ICFOS, designated as the State Nodal Agency for Malayalam Computing, has developed <coughs> and released 10 software solutions to the public as part of the localization of technology and aims to set up a research center to make effective use of Malayalam language technology in the field of e-governance. The Center for Development of Imaging Technology has been functioning as a technology solution provider in the government sector over more than three decades now. In the coming year, CDIT's focus will be on strengthening managed security services and augmented reality, virtual reality facilities, augmentation of research and development activities, upgradation of security document forensic lab, augmentation of video production facility for web channel, augmentation of infrastructural facility of digital archiving centers in CDIT and completion of ICT building for CDIT at Tiruvananthapuram. The Electronics and Information Technology Department, along with NIC, played an important role in installation of an online portal, COVID-19 Jagartha. This portal is a single stop portal for registration of incoming and outgoing commuters in the state for monitoring the offenses for violation of COVID-19 protocol and also for people to register themselves if tested positive for COVID-19. The portal also has a live dashboard which details the number of hospitals, COVID first line treatment centers, COVID second line treatment centers, and domiciliary care centers, ventilators, the beds, and occupancy on a real-time basis. Promotion of a startup shall continue to receive high priority during 2021-22, we propose to scale up many of the innovative experiments that have been successfully implemented in this regard. Tourism. The COVID outbreak affected the tourism industry severely, throwing thousands out of work and closing down hotels and service operations. In order to help the stakeholders, 
COVID-19 relief assistance package was announced by the Tourism Department through the Chief Minister's Tourism Loan Assistance Scheme with increased subvention providing for need-based financial assistance and tourism employee wage support schemes in association with State Level Bankers Committee and Kerala Bank. Around 50,000 people are envisaged to be trained under various activities of the responsible tourism mission and will be connected directly or indirectly with the tourism industry to ensure their income. Currently, 6,000 persons have completed their training. Further 40,000 people are expected to complete their training program in the next one year. In order to tackle the crisis in the tourism sector, the government has proposed a loan interest subvention scheme in association with Kerala State Cooperative Bank for the employees in the tourism sector. Vigorous marketing efforts will have to be undertaken to ensure that the industry revives to the pre-COVID level at the earliest. The special attention that is paid to heritage tourism will be further strengthened with the inclusion of Tiruvananthapuram Heritage Project along with Mozeris, Elapura and Thalasseri. The focus on Malabar tourism will continue. Labor and skills. My government is committed to safeguard the migrant workers in the state. Department of Labor and Skills played a very active role in managing the requirements of the guest workers in the state during lockdown. The detailed database, database of the workers was updated and the field level officials played an active role in ensuring that cooked food and ration was provided to them during the lockdown. The department also undertook the massive task of facilitating the travel of those workers back to their home states after the railways restarted train services. My government facilitated the return of guest workers to their home states after health screening at railway stations. Due to the momentous efforts of the Department of Labor and Skills, Kerala did not experience any public unrest or the crisis of guest workers walking on roads to go back to their state of origin. My government is keen to minimize accidents in workplaces and an accident prevention through safety surveillance a study has been conducted in the state. Goal 8 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals aims to promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for workers in the industrial sector. Based on this, goal 8.8 .8 accident statistics among factories functioning in the state during the last 10 years has been collected and examined by the specially constituted technical experts of the factories and boilers department to minimize the intensity of accidents and to increase the productivity. A mobile application named FabSafe to accelerate the ease of doing business. Initiatives of the state government has been started by the factories and boilers department. 
a web portal namely factories and boilers online system to showcase the important services of the factories and boilers has been in place since 2015. Infrastructure Public Works My government restarted the development of National Highway 66 by upgrading to 46 lane across 568 kilometers in Kerala, which was pending for decades. The total project cost is approximately 45,000 crore rupees, including anticipated land acquisition cost of rupees 21,000 crores. While the work on Kalakutam to Mukola stage has been completed and inaugurated, the work on Thalassery Bypass and Mukola to Tamil Nadu border is ongoing. My government is the only state government which has agreed to bear 25% of land acquisition cost for upgradation of existing national highways. After signing of the MOU, my government has transferred 452 crore rupees to NHAI and CALA unit as a state share of land acquisition cost incurred till now. The long-awaited and delayed projects like Vaitila and Kundanur flyovers in Kochi and Elapula bypass have been completed by my government. An all-weather semi-elevated Elapula Changana Seri road will be ready this year.